Hi, I'd like to welcome you to this demonstration of the training version of Wise Option Equine Enterprise Management, the ultimate equine management software. For this demonstration, we're going to cover not only the features of the training version, but also try to leave you with some tips to improve the efficiency and profitability of your business. That is, after all, the goal. We will then conclude with some of the final steps to complete your purchase and help you get on your way. This is a list of some of the training version features that are outlined on our web pages um, at www.wiseoption.com. You may have seen this list already. This will give you a little more detail into each one of the features, but for this particular demonstration, we're going to cover some of these features. We're going to outline the customer and horse management, show you how just by doing your record keeping, you're also doing your billing in one step through your procedure entry, show you how to actually manage those records that you're entering, show you about the reminder feature as well as the triggers feature of the Wise Option training version, and also cover boarding as well as billing and invoicing. So for this, let's go to Wise Option the program. This is our main screen of Wise Option. Uh, yours will look very similar. I have actually removed the picture that is here. You usually have a picture, but for this demonstration, it usually goes a little faster if we take that off. So we will go ahead and get started. Our first button here is the horse file, and this is where we're going to start. So I'm going to click the horse file, and I can see a list of all of the horses in my system. And actually, this first list as it comes up is going to be um, default is set for active horses only. Now, generally, we say that active horses live on your property, and then active horses don't. If I wanted to see a list of act, uh, if inactive horses included in here, I'd simply click this button, and then it will show us all of our horses we have in the system. So for the time being, we'll just look at active horses. Let's take this mare, Hope by Envy. Her barn name is Hope, you can see here. Uh, neck band of 58 as well as some other information. I'm going to click on her one time, and as I do that, you can see this area on the top right will generate with information. It has on here, of course, her name, registration numbers, um, as well as some other information, and a shortcut to her owner. Now, we'll get to this button in just one second. For now, I want to show you these buttons right here. This Add a Horse as a Patient comes with our new hospital module if you guys decide to purchase that. So we will skip that for now. This button is covered in the hospital version, though. So for here, I want you to notice all of the buttons you have here. We can look at her boarding log. We'll go ahead and open up her nomination. So you can add any nominations that, she may be, uh, that you may already have on her. You have access to form letters. Wise Option has a fantastic form letter program. It's not covered in this demonstration, but there is other information on it. You can look at any of her bills, any of her procedures, markings. We're going to go to her show records. You can enter in date, class, the money one, as well as your description. Keep up on those advertising. You can look at her horse notes. This also has a great place for her insurance, which would allow you to put in her carrier, the policy, the agent, phone number, how much she's insured for, any comments um, on what you might need to do in case of an emergency. But this information is located here as well as her pedigree. Now, it does have a pedigree in here. Um, you can add the sire or dam of any of these horses just by clicking add. They do not need to be horses in your list. Um, but for her, I know her dam and her sire, so I went ahead and put those in. I can also click here to see a list of all of the foals. Now, this is going to provide me with a list of all of my horses in my system, and any one of these, this happens to be one of the stallions, I can see all of the foals that has him as uh, the parent of this foal. So from here, I have all of the dams, the foals, and then I know they're all sired by Wildcat. So that is a feature for the pedigree. So from here, this is uh, the majority of the information on this page. We're going to shortcut over to the owner. And if I refresh this horse list, I can see it again, all the horses that he owns that's in my system. This can provide you a wealth of information and make you um, much more profit and much more efficient when you're talking to your clients. If uh, Mr. Adams was to call, we all know that Mr. Adams wants to know about every horse that he has in care with you, not just about the one that he called about. So um, this will provide you a wealth of information. You can click on any one of these horses. And again, most of these buttons are the same ones that we saw on the horse screen. One that I didn't show you over there was the horse file. And I will go ahead and click that now. And this is the basic information for every horse. 
So again, it has her name, which could be her registered name. This is the sort ID, which also could be her registered name, or you could change it to be her sort ID, uh, her barn name, or anything else that she might go by, anything you'd want to, uh, to call her. Has her neck band number, which this can be alphanumeric. Date of birth, color, her sex. She happens to be a mare that has a foal at her side, so I've put in her last foaling date here. I have her owner as well as her boarding farm, maybe the agent or the manager that is in charge of this horse while she's in contact with you. I have her association, which this mare happens to be double registered, so I have created an association that includes both of them. And here I have done the same thing with her registration numbers. I also have her job purpose as well as her location. And all of the boxes that have the drop down arrow can be customized by you. So this may be an example of what my farm looks like, but you want yours to look like yours. So you can have as many locations as you'd like, as well as the associations, colors, that kind of thing. So this is information you'd fill out. Um, upon her arrival, change it as needed. You can also do ownership. You can let Wise Option take care of splitting up your um, joint owner's bills if you have a syndicated horse. You would simply insert the customer, tell it what percentage they own, and continue until you have 100%. So I will unclick that and close this file. So you can see all of the horses here along with all of the contact information we have. Much more efficient to deal with than having to go from horse to horse or actually try to remember what you've done to each horse. So from this customer page, we're going to go to the customer's account. And I'm going to go ahead and do all dates so that we have a little more to look at on the screen here. Now, as this is generating, you can see each invoice, each time I received a credit, the total of each of those and a running subtotal, as well as the horse's name for which the invoice was generated. So I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom. And maybe, for instance, Mr. Adams called and he was curious as to what exactly was on this bill, why it was so much more than the others. At any time, I can double click on this. And at a quick glance, I have a list of every procedure on that invoice. No longer do you have to assume the client is right and give back a little bit of money. You know exactly what happened. So I know that this mayor received a West Nile vaccination on 327. I put it in the computer. I saw it happen. I know we did it. And that client owes money for it. So this is a great way to be a little bit more profitable so you're not giving away free stuff. If that client was to call and argue and you were absolutely positive that you calculated that invoice right, you might want to feel obligated to give some of that money back. We don't want you to do that. So if you put this uh, information correctly into Wise Option, every time it will cr generate a correct invoice for you. So I'm going to close that. Adding a payment or a credit is as easy as clicking this button. You can pick whichever category you would like for it to be displayed. If that category is not here, you can use the shortcuts to add a category. This shortcut is found on many of our forms um, for any of the drop-down boxes that are within it. So on that horse file we were just looking a second ago, if I was to need another location it wasn't there, I could go to shortcuts and there would be a location there. I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to close his account. And again, here's the section for the form letters. Um, form letters just like anything else. Uh, any other form letters you might do, generated in Microsoft Word. But it is available here. I can uh, go to this customer's file. It looks similar to the horse file. It's where you would enter all of the pertinent information. If you have active and inactive, you can charge the APR. And we'll get to that whenever we do the billing process. You can set for them to hold the bill. And you can also flag that client. Now this flag as well as the flag on the horse file can mean anything that you would like. It is simply a flag for you to know that there's something special about this customer or horse. So we'll go ahead and close this information. And I'm going to go to this horse and show you how we actually add procedures and generate these records. So I have my horse highlighted. I can click Procedure. And I can see a list of all the procedures that were performed to this horse that I've billed for. Now the little asterisk over here underneath the comment, uh, according to this, uh, key up here means that the procedure has been billed. We also have hidden procedures and hidden comments. Now what I want to do is go ahead and add a procedure. If I add the procedure from within the horse's file, it will auto-populate that horse's name for me. A little bit of a time saver makes you a little more efficient. And I'm going to go ahead and say that we did an AQHA enrollment. So I happen to know that because my uh, sort ID begins with an X, I can type in X and continue. 
However, if I wanted to use this button, I can see a list of all of my um, procedures that I have in the system. So I'm going to go ahead and select the enrollment. As soon as I select it, it's going to suggest to me who it's performed by. This is, again, how I set the task up and my suggested cost. And perhaps I did two enrollments for her. So I can go ahead and change that to two. I can do it today and set it as done. Done means it actually happened. Undone would be a reminder for some time in the future, and we'll cover reminders in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. It added the procedure. It's now on her file here, uh, permanent record. And as soon as I do the billing process, it will be included in billing. So I have, uh, you can understand that it would be the same thing if you did a farrier or a butte or a bandage change. As soon as you are documenting it in the record part of her health, you're also billing that client for it at the same time. Now, on this, if I wanted to change it, maybe I wanted to give him a discount, I could change it to maybe $50 instead of, uh, instead of $100 a piece, and the total would be then $100. So I can save that and edit them until I'm billed. So we're going to do this um, for each procedure that you have. Now, if you have something where maybe the farrier came and shod eight of your um, show horses, or maybe we trimmed eight foals. You don't want to enter those one at a time. So we're going to go back to the main screen and open up the procedure. And again, this is the same form that we just saw a second ago. However, the horse's name is not there because we didn't open it from a horse. We're going to go to multiple horses. This is a fantastic form. Uh, way more efficient than doing it one at a time. And that is one of our tips. If you can do things in mass, it is always easier and always more efficient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to my farriers, and I'm going to do my farrier trim. And I can sort this list however I want. Perhaps I want to sort it by location, because we did all of field one at the same time. Here's my field one horses. So I'm going to go back over, and I'm going to select each one of the horses we did. Perhaps 7114 didn't get done. And I will select all of those, make sure my date is correct, I have it as done, I have my correct task, and I'm going to save it. Before I save it, I'm going to go up to Tools and Form Holder Activation. This is a great feature, and I'll show you how to do this. We're going to actually schedule reminders as soon as we finish billing this. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. One task, which is my trim for six horses. This is what I want to do, I'll say yes. And it's now added six procedures to each one of those horses' files, one to each one, six total. It's still open, which means that all of my settings have stayed the same. For these group of horses, I would like to schedule a reminder to be done in six weeks. So I'm going to change this from done to undone, which indicates it's a reminder. And then I'm going to go to my calendar, and I'm going to go six weeks from now. And I'm going to schedule it for 6.14. Again, as a reminder, the same horses, the same uh, trim. I'm going to save it. Again, one task for six horses, yes. Six procedures added, so we'll say OK. And it's going to tell me the form is still open, but I'm going to go ahead and close it. I've now done 12 procedures in a matter of seconds. Hugely efficient. In doing the procedures, we also have another way to do and generate the reminders. It's called triggers. So I'm going to go to triggers. And say, for example, I have um, a, a program where I might fall out uh, mares, or if you have a horse that's sick and needs to be on vaccination. Any one event that triggers other events, you can use a trigger. So let's do my foaling foal, for example. When a mare has a baby, I'm going to enter that baby into the system as a horse, and then for that foal, I'm going to go ahead and build the IgG. It's set as done because it is performed all the time. There's no change in that. I'm going to schedule the foal for its first and second plasma, and I'm also going to schedule it for its first and second deworm and vaccination. All that I need to do to schedule this is pick my foal. Let's go down and find us a foal. Here's a foal. I'm going to pick my target date, which let's say it was the first. And my target date is going to be the target of how I want this calculated. It happens to be his birth date. So on this first full plasma, I want to target my full plasma three days from his birth date. So I'm going to select his birth date. I would simply ge click Generate Procedures, and seven of these procedures would then be added to his uh, file. Same thing if I have maybe SMZs for seven days. 
perhaps my horse needs to be on antibiotics and you don't want to bill each one, you can go right here and set them all up. It will also generate that reminder for the rest of the six days. I have another one for pregnant mare, for a mare that falls out. Um, your imagination is simply where this trigger uh, feature ends. So that is another way to do reminders. Now, we've created all these procedures, we've created all these reminders, we need a way to manage them. So this is the procedure manager. I'm going to go ahead and open this. Uh, this is what the form looks like. You can change any of these settings to actually ask it to um, fill in this form with the options that you want. So what I'm going to do is um, say, for example, I need to know um, a list of everything that I need to do for the next two weeks. So I'm going to come in here and do the next two weeks. So from today and then to the next two weeks. And let's say it's all my undone. These two I can leave as they are. And I don't want a specific task. I'd like all tasks, all horses, and all professionals. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh this list. And it's going to come up a list of everything I need to accomplish, the date at which it needs to be accomplished, of course the horse, the location, and how much I'm charging for that procedure. Now it's also nice to go ahead and let's say I want to select just a specific uh, professional. So I'm going to go to Max, who happens to be the farrier, and let's go out the next 180 days. And I'm going to refresh this list. And I can see that on 614, the date that we scheduled, here are my six trims that need to be done. Now let's just pretend for an example purposes that today is 614 and Max just came and trimmed all these horses. I have this nice button here called Check All. And I can set them all as done, which then when we do billing, we'll apply it to that customer's account. So I'm going to go ahead and set it as done. And they've all been updated. And if I refresh this list, they're not undone anymore. They're set as done. This procedure manager is a fantastic tool to keep you way more efficient, way on top of um, your procedures, what you need to do. It is going to be uh, the, the form that tells you what you need to accomplish every day or every week, how often that you pull it. So from here, we're going to close, and I'm going to take you now to boarding. Boarding is one of our most simple modules. This is a list of all of the horses with their neck bands the date of their arrival. This is the new period date, which is the period that is going to begin to charge the next board, their current rate, and the description of their rate. Now, if I go to rates, I can see that I have in here daily rates and monthly rates. We encourage you to have both. If you have a training horse that's on a per month rate, that's fine. If you're maybe um, managing a broodmare that's on a daily rate, that's fine too. You can easily change or update a rate simply by highlighting it, clicking update, uh, maybe the name is okay, but I need to change it to $13 a day. So I just changed that. I can click yes for month, day for no, click day, and it's now been updated to $13. Very simple to do your rates. So for this example, we're going to go ahead and check a horse in. Um, getting the date right is, is a huge important job whenever you are doing it maybe manually and creating your invoices and adding up on your fingers the number of days they were here or trying to figure it out from a calculator, Wise Option eliminates that for you. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and go to Classic Sport. Uh, let's put her in at uh, wet mare rate. I'm going to choose my date. And today is fine. I can backdate this for yesterday if you want. It's going to calculate it how you tell it to. So we're going to go ahead and get today and register her arrival say yes, it's the correct date. We offer you to add comments almost everywhere throughout the program. Comments are a huge help for you. If you ever want to go back and look at something that you did, um, comments can be really a time saver for that. So we will say no for this example, and she's now on our farm. And I see that right there, Classic Sport has her arrival date and her new period date, rate of $15 on a wet mare. Now, every time that I charge my boarding module, she's going to be charged at that wet mare rate until I change it. Uh, this eliminates you having to figure out how many days they've been there or how many days you need to charge by counting either, like I said, on your fingers or on a calendar. Um, you know, missing one day for one horse, that's money out of your pocket. That is not profitable. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. We'll come to the checkout portion in just a moment. Let's now go to billing. Billing is one of the most simple, quick, and accurate forms we have here um, in Wise Option. The quicker you can get your invoices printed, generated out to your customers, the more 
um, rapidly you get their income and you get their checks and you can put it in your bank and continue to do the things you want to do. If you can't send out your invoices, they can't pay you. And it's a huge problem that we've seen over and over on horse farms. Wise Option has made this process extremely simple and easy and quick. Uh, all you do is go right down this checklist. So the first thing we want you to do is create a go back point. Now, Wise Option as a program will generate an auto backup for you every time you log on in the morning. You have seven of those. When it gets to auto backup number eight, it will rewrite over number one and continue on in the process. But if you've done a lot of work all day and now you're going to bill and it's maybe the evening or it's four o'clock in the afternoon, you don't want to have to go back to, you know, seven o'clock this morning when you started. You'd rather go back to right now. So we always suggest you to create a go back point. The next level on this checklist is boarding. We were just here, however, now this charge button is lit up. So I'm going to go ahead and charge my board. And to do that, it's going to ask me if I want a charge board, and then it's going to ask me if I've looked at this list. Now we offer you the ability right here under this print feature to print out a list of all your horses. It is an easy and quick way to double check that everybody is where they need to be. So after you've done that, you can go ahead and proceed and say yes. I'm going to tell it the last day I want to charge. Now it happens to be May the 3rd. You can see that right up here. But I only want to charge through the end of the month. Maybe I was out of town. Maybe I was at a horse show. Maybe I had something personal to do. So I only have to go through a specific date. So we're going to say OK on that. The last day should be 4.30, which means that my new period should start on 5.1, which is the same principle right up here. So we're going to say yes. And now we get to tell it what day we want that procedure to be charged on. Now, what this boarding module does is it actually takes the information that you've put in it, and it's creating a procedure for you. Just like on maybe an accounting program or some of the other things, you might say board $10 a day at 31 days. Well, that 31 days is a little questionable when you do it by hand. With Wise Option, that program is, is eliminated. The need for you to calculate that is gone. So I need to tell it which day I would like that procedure to be um, generated on. So 4.30 is the day I want. We're going to say OK. And I'm going to confirm that it's 4.30 and continue on forward. And you can see it's billing each horse charging board. 16 horses successfully charged. Now you may be wondering why it says 16 and I have 17 horses here. Remember that horse classic sport we just put in? Well, she hadn't arrived yet. We billed through 4.30 and she wasn't even technically on my farm. It knows the difference. You can continue to use your program just as you normally would, even though you haven't billed yet. Some of the other programs out on the market force you to bill before you continue on in the month. Well, I know that in the farms that I visited and the places that I've been, work and business doesn't stop just to do billing. So we've allowed you that capacity as well. I've now charged my board. I'm going to close that. My next one is the horse review. This is simply the same button as this horse review right here. I'm going to go ahead and close that. This is the customer charges and credits, the same as this customer button. Maybe Mr. Adams paid me a check and I forgot to credit to his account. So I'm going to type in a check and let's say that it was on 428 is when I received it and it was for uh, $950. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. It's now been added. I didn't have to exit the boarding module. I'm still right here in the middle. It's told me right where I was in case I got distracted and forgot. The next section is the Unbuild Procedures Review. This is very helpful. You can either uh, view it on the monitor or you can send it to the printer. Of course, for the purpose of this demonstration, we'll look at it on the monitor. I can go to any one of these horses and see everything I'm getting ready to bill out. Very nice tool to use go ahead and close that. The next one is charging a service fee. This is optional, of course. You can charge a service fee. Um, the unbilled procedures that have a negative value are going to be credited to the customer's account before the service fee is charged. So all of these are settings you can choose based on what you want to do on your uh, business. I go ahead and close that for now. The next thing is actually billing the procedures. It's a very simple, um, only a couple of questions because you don't need to tell it much more. You've told it all this time over the month. I can bill all the procedures through today or, like what I was saying before, I only have to bill through the end of the month. I can change this date to be whatever I want. Maybe you bill on the 25th. That's completely fine. But with this feature right here, it allows you to continue to move forward in your practice and not have to stop to do this. I have this option to bill procedures with a value of zero as well. I'm going to like my settings just like they are and leave them, so I'm going to go ahead and click Bill Procedures. I do want to go ahead and create my invoices. 
Double confirmation. Again, this is the date of the invoice. Double check it. And now it's billing. This is one of the simplest, like I said before, simplest areas of the program. It has to be in order for busy, busy trainers to get um, their bills out on time. And we know how that is, so we want to make it simple. 20 invoices created for $9,100. The average per horse, 33 procedures, and the average there. Kind of handy information. Got a better place for you to look at that if you want it on paper, so we'll go ahead and say OK. It's now going to update their current balance. And done. So technically now you're done billing. The computer's been updated. It knows everything. However, it'd probably be nice to send your client something saying that they had the invoices, right? You want that money in. So the next is pre-billing and statements. Based on this form here, you're going to determine how you want your statements to look and which kind of dates you want to print. Our invoices, if you remember, were created on 430. So we need that to be 430 here to, to include those, invo pardon me, those invoices. I can add customers with a balance of zero if perhaps you want on your um, messages that are in your statements. Uh, if you need to inform them of something, you can send something to every client that you have. Um, and again, you'd simply go through these. You could print your statements out here. If I were to do that, it would run me through a couple of options. And then I would say, yes, I want to print out my statements. Or I can print out a pre-billing report, which is a very concentrated um, very few pages compared to your invoices, and it gives you all the information on your invoices in a very compact way to do it. This second button under here is to select customers to be printed out. Now, if I pick that, I can refresh this list. Here's a list of customers. I can print just this one. I can do from this point forward, or if I have two marks, I can print just between the marks. This is a great feature if you happen to lose power or there's a black mark on your paper or anything like that. You only have to print out, you know, the ones that you need, and you can certainly select those. That is all for billing. That's it. Now, at the end of this, it offers you the opportunity to see the, year or the, the reports for the end of the period. These are also accessible under Customers and Print, Reports for the End of the Period. This is the one procedure or the one report that I think is the most helpful that really drives home the, the, the reason that we have these reports here. Um, you can see a list of all of the reports that we have to offer at this point that are accounting related. And I'm going to go ahead and print this to the screen so that uh, we all can take a look. And here I have, for example, my farrier category. We talked about categories earlier. This is so nice because if you have a farrier category and everything they do for you is in here, this number right here that you build your clients, it better be as much as your farrier bill that you just paid the farrier. Same thing with your veterinary expenses, um, your treatments, your board, anything that you can keep track of that you would like to categorize, it's a great way to have some checks and balances as far as making sure that your money that you're sending out is less than what's coming in. That's one of those ways to make you way more profitable is to actually have that information right in front of you. This is how Wise Option has answered that problem. So again, this is just one of the um, reports that we have to offer. There are many. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And that's pretty much Wise Option. So we're going to, uh, we're, we're going to be finished up here. That's all of it. Now, if you are watching this demonstration because you're tired of the way things are or you know it could be better or you're losing money and you know it, you need Wise Option. There's no, there's no other thing that is going to suit you or work for you the best. And we want you to become the most efficient and most um, profitable company that you can be. And to do that, we have implemented all of these tools that I've shown you today to help you with that. Now, if you're happy with the way things are going and um, you don't think that, that you need to change what you've got right now, we completely understand. We hope that we've left you with some tips to make um, your business more profitable and more efficient without Wise Option. But if you need us, you need us. And we want for you to be able to be ready to purchase as soon as you get done watching this. So when you close this demonstration, look for that ready to buy link that's right there on the Wise Option website. This will guide you through the entire purchase process. Um, we would, as soon as we get your invoice ready, we're going to set up an installation appointment for you and get you running so that you can become more efficient and more profitable. 
Now, if you still have some questions and want some more information, we offer you to continue to browse the WISE Option website. Look around for more features. Um, you know, there are other um, demonstrations out there on our website that you can look at. Um, read the frequently asked questions. Read our story. Uh, look around and browse that website. You can also look for our webinar page. Um, the webinars are upcoming live, interactive. Um, you can be a part of them, answer questions. Um, it's an actual live demonstration. If you want more information, you can tell the presenter what you need to see and how it works and ask more questions. That page will have um, a calendar on it of some upcoming demonstrations, so feel free to, um, to look for that and to sign up and register for those. Feel free to email us at sales at wiseoption.com. Any questions you might have, if you're uncertain about the process still at this point, please email us. You can also call us at 888-345-WISE, which is 9473. So we want to thank you for being a part of this and taking time out of your hectic schedule already to, uh, to look at our demonstration. Please feel free to contact us if you have other questions. Otherwise, we look forward for you guys to, uh, to be clients, and we'll be talking to you soon.